On behalf of the Francis House School District, welcome to this training session for volunteers. Although this training is intended to be thorough, a situation could arise where you find yourself in need of guidance. In such a case, please contact the administrator in the building where you are volunteering as soon as possible. Thank you for your attention to this very important material contained in the presentation. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, otherwise known as FERPA, requires confidentiality in regard to students' educational records. Generally, schools must have written permission from the parent in order to release any information from a student's educational records. However, schools may disclose without consent directory information is indicated on the screen. Schools must tell parents about directory information and allow parents a reasonable amount of time to request that the school not disclose directory information about their students. Maintaining confidentiality is very important. Do not disclose any student or family information that is learned as a result of your volunteer activities with the district. Thank you for your help in maintaining confidentiality for our students and families. The Americans with Disabilities Act requirement took effect in January 1992. Under Title II of ADA, no qualified individual with a disability shall, on the basis of the disability, be excluded from participation in or be denied the benefits of the services, programs, or activities of a public entity or be subjected to discrimination by any public entity. Therefore, public school facilities must meet ADA requirements for physical and program accessibility. Some examples to access a buildings are listed on the screen. If you have an ADA complaint or question, please contact the administration office and ask for the ADA compliance officer. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act is a federal civil rights law that has been in effect since 1973. Section 504 prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability. It requires districts to identify and evaluate to determine eligibility for a 504 accommodation plan for students with a medical or mental health diagnosis. A disability must substantially limit a major life function. Each year, the Francis South School District reviews universal precautions with district employees. Universal precautions are used as a means of preventing the transmission of blood-borne pathogens such as HIV and the hepatitis virus. The term universal indicates that precautions are to be taken at all times and in all situations. No distinction is made between body substances from a person with a known disease or those from a person without symptoms or with an undiagnosed disease. A federal law written to protect discrimination against individuals with infectious diseases states that any infected person does not have to inform their employers or school districts of their individual health status. This includes infectious diseases. This means that anyone could be contagious with AIDS and or hepatitis and they do not have to share that information with the school nurse, teacher, or principal. This not only applies to students, but also applies to any district employee. Therefore, the body substances of all persons should be considered to contain infectious germs. Transmission of communicable diseases is more likely to occur from contact with infected body fluid from, from someone who does not have any symptoms. The reason? If we know that someone is contagious, we tend to be more careful of how we handle their body fluids. If we don't think they are infectious, we tend to be lax in how we handle the cleanup. The term body fluids includes blood, urine, emesis, semen, mucus, drainage from wounds, and saliva. Contact with body fluids may present a risk of infection with a variety of germs. Universal precautions involve the following measures. Appropriate barrier precautions should be used to avoid skin or mucous membrane contact with any of the body fluids. Such barrier precautions include the use of standard vinyl or latex gloves along with protective eyewear. Due to the increased potential of latex allergies, the district only uses vinyl gloves. These items should always be available and readily accessible. Hands should also be washed immediately after gloves are removed. If any body fluid comes in contact with the mucous membrane surfaces of the mouth or nose, that area should be vigorously flushed with water. 
If the mucous membrane surface of the eyes are contaminated, they should be irrigated with clear water, saline solution, or any eye irrigation design for the purpose of cleansing the eyes. Please make sure to inform the building administrator if an exposure has taken place. An additional component to universal precaution training includes severe allergy awareness. The main causes for an allergic reaction are food, especially peanuts, insect bites, stings, medications, and reactions to material containing latex. The anaphylactic allergic reaction can be mild to life-threatening. It can involve various areas of the body. Symptoms can occur within minutes to two hours after contact with the allergy-causing substance. In rare cases, the symptoms can appear up to four hours after contact. Symptoms may include those listed on the screen. Epinephrine is a drug of choice for treating an anaphylactic reaction. Epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, is a naturally occurring hormone. It works to reverse the symptoms of the reaction and helps prevent further progression of anaphylaxis. Epinephrine is administered through the use of an EpiPen. Every nurse's office has an EpiPen for emergency, emergency use, and every employee has been trained in the use of EpiPens. For those students whose allergies are known to cause a life-threatening event, they will have their EpiPen with them at all times. In many cases, EpiPens for students are stored in the nurse's office of each school. Each school nurse is aware of the students with severe allergies and will share the necessary information with employees on a need-to-know basis. Please remember that for some individuals, the first contact with a specific food or insect could cause them to have an allergic reaction. Immediately after an EpiPen has been administered, someone should call 911. It is imperative that advanced care be available as soon as possible. Someone should stay with the person until the school nurse or advanced medical care arrives. By following these simple precautions, the Francis House School District will be a safer environment for all. Each student in the Francis House School District is expected to respect the authority of the school and to maintain an orderly atmosphere in the school setting before, during, and after school hours. To guide our actions in the area of student behavior and to inform students and their families of behavioral expectations, the Francis House School District has developed the Student Code of Conduct, which is available on the school and district website at the beginning of each school year. Please take time to familiarize yourself with the contents of the Code of Conduct booklet so that you will know what our expectations are for our students. Any concerns regarding student conduct should be reported to the appropriate school authority, that is the teacher or administrator, immediately. It is important to all of us that our schools are safe and free of violent acts and are places where learning is the primary focus. To that end, a Missouri law was enacted several years ago known as the Safe Schools Act. The Safe Schools Act defines acts of violence or violent behavior as the exertion of physical force by a student with intent to do serious bodily harm to another person while on school property, including a school bus, or while involved in a school activity. A teacher or other staff member must report any assault to the building principal. You should also report any assault that you observe as well. If you do not know whether or not you should report an incident, be safe and report it to a school official. Likewise, students found in possession of a weapon or controlled substance must also be immediately reported. The safety and well-being of each child in the Francis House School District is important to us all. Unfortunately, children in our community are sometimes abused or neglected. School employees are mandatory reporters of such abuse, su suspected abuse or neglect, and must inform Children's Division immediately. When a school employee has reason to believe that a student has been or may be subjected to abuse or neglect, or observes a child being subjected to conditions or circumstances that would reasonably result in abuse or neglect, the employee must immediately notify the building principal or designee. If you suspect that a student has been subjected to abuse or neglect, please inform a school official. Bullying is the intentional action by an individual or group of individuals to inflict physical, emotional, or mental suffering on another individual or group of individuals. 
The Law and Board Policy 2655 defines bullying as the intentional action by an individual or group of individuals to inflict intimidation, unwanted aggressive behavior, or harassment that is repetitive or substantially likely to be repeated and causes a reasonable student to fear for his or her physical safety or property, substantially interferes with the educational performance, opportunities, or benefits of any student without exception or substantially disrupts the orderly operation of the school. Bullying may consist of physical actions, including gestures or oral, cyberbullying, electronic or written communication, and any threat of retaliation for reporting acts of bullying. Students who engage in significant acts of misconduct off campus, which materially and adversely impact the education of district students, will be subject to discipline. Cyberbullying occurs when a student communicates with another by any means, including telephone, writing, or via electronic communications with the intent to intimidate or inflict physical, emotional, or mental harm or physically contacts another person with the intent to intimidate or to inflict physical, emotional, or mental harm. If you observe bullying behavior, you are required to inform a school official immediately. Internet access is available in the Francis House School District to students, teachers, staff, parents, and administrators. The goal of the district's use of telecommunications is to provide all staff and students with the ability to use these tools to conduct research and communicate with others over the network. Access is limited as it relates to educational purposes and is considered a privilege and not a right. Use of the district technology and electronic network resources requires students and employees to maintain a high degree of personal responsibility. Personal responsibility includes password control and protection, use of the network for appropriate purposes, and respect for the confidentiality of the database information. A few examples of items that are considered unacceptable are on the screen. The district is compliant with the Children's Internet Protection Act and uses filtering and blocking devices to protect students and employees from harmful and inappropriate sites and materials. If you suspect that a student is accessing such sites, Report it to a school personnel immediately. In addition, please report the following. Vandalism, unauthorized access to information, inappropriate websites, or harmful use of the network. It is the intent of the Board of Education to enforce and abide by the provisions of the current copyright laws. Copyrighted materials, whether print or non-print, will not be duplicated unless such reproduction meets fair use standards or unless written permission from the copyright holder has been received. Additional copyright information is available in the library media center at each school. Title IX statute states that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participating in, be denied the benefits of, or be subject to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. The Board of Education is committed to maintaining a school and work environment for its employees, students, and volunteers that is free from sexual harassment. Sexual harassment can be in the form of unwelcome sexual advances, unwelcome verbal conduct of a sexual nature, or unwelcome physical conduct of a sexual nature. Unwelcome sexual advances may include, but are not limited to, any invitation, even subtle, intended to result in a sexual liaison, invitations to dinner or social events when refusal results in adverse employee action, and pro propositioning an individual. Unwelcome verbal conduct of a sexual nature may include, but is also not limited to, sexually provocative or explicit speech, publicly expressed sexual fantasies, jokes of a sexual or crude nature, derogatory comments directed toward males or females as a class, demeaning comments, threats for not agreeing to submit to sexual advances, and writing sexually explicit memos or emails. Unwelcome physical conduct of a sexual nature may include, but is also not limited to, grabbing or twisting an indiv individual's arm, any unwanted touching, sexually offensive pranks, drawing sexually explicit cartoons, other drawings or graffiti, gestures indicating sexual behavior, suggestive winks, and kissing. 
students may experience harassment that is unique to their situation, some of which may not be immediately recognized as sexual harassment, but which may support a potential claim against the district or its employees, if not remedy. Such harassment may include, but is not limited to, touching, oral comments, sexual name calling, spreading sexual rumors, jokes, pictures, leers, overly personal conversation, cornering or blocking a student's movement, pulling at clothes, student's public dis display of affection on school premises, joking comments regarding a student enrolling in a predominantly single gender class, interfering with a student's achievement in a historically single gender class, and limiting or denying students access to educational resources because of their gender. Sexual harassment is not limited to, limited to conduct by males toward females. Sexual harassment may occur between any or all of the following. Student to student, staff to student, student to staff, staff to staff, male to male, female to female, male to female, and female to male. In this list, volunteers are included as staff. District employees or volunteers should not have romantic or sexual relationships with students or be involved in any harassing activities as described above. Any person who alleges sexual harassment by a district employee, student, or volunteer may use the district's compliance procedures to report directly to a building administrator or the district Title IX coordinator. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 states that no person in the United States shall, on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, be excluded for, from participating in, be denied benefits of, or be s subject to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. The following is a partial list of actions or behaviors which may be actionable under Title VI or Francis House School District policies. Language, jokes, threats, gestures, actual phys physical aggression, and failure to report actions or behaviors. Please do not participate in these behaviors and report any such observed behaviors to building administration. Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 also applies to the employee practices, policies, and procedures of the district as they may relate to the race, color, sex, religion, or national origin of employees and applicants for employment. Adults in school have an obligation to actively encourage the maintenance of an environment free from racial and or national origin discrimination or harassment. Volunteers should report such discrimination or harassment to a school official. Thank you for your attention. This training production was created for the benefit of all Francis House School District volunteers in support of a safe and caring learning environment in all Francis House schools. Have a great and a safe school year.